They're living in the past. Pulsefire cannon primed. Can't fight the inevitable. They don't know what they're up against. Scanning for real threats. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I will show you how to play Israel. So Israel is a caster ADC and he's actually really really OP right now because he got buffed and his items also got buffed. So his passive gives him bonus attack speed whenever you hit an enemy with an ability and it can stack up to 5 times giving you a maximum of 50% attack speed. And then your Q guys is a single target damaging ability with pretty uh, decent range. It procs on hit so that's why you see people rushing the sheen item because that damage will be applied with your Q. On top of that Whenever you hit someone with your Q, then all of your ability cooldowns will be reduced by 1.5 seconds. And that also goes for your ultimate. Your E is your arcane shift, so of course it will make you blink. Two locations, so that's what makes Ezreal extremely safe in the lane. Makes him very hard to gank for anyone. And also pretty uh, difficult to escape from. You can use that to hop over walls with. Um, it's basically a flash on a really low cooldown. So Ezreal is actually really strong in the early game guys, uh, before your first base. You have pretty decent range on your auto attacks and long range on your Q as well, so you're looking to poke your opponent as much as possible. Keep in mind though that your Q can be body blocked by the minions. So often when you try to poke people, you last hit a low HP minion with your auto attacks and then you immediately throw out the Q so you can hit the champion behind the minion. That's a pretty typical way of Israel players to poke the enemy champion. And then your W, you can mark uh, the enemy champion, the monster or the structure, so the tower. And then you can detonate it with a auto attack or an ability to deal bonus damage. And if you detonate that W with an ability, then you will also get the mana refunded and some extra mana on top of that. So what makes Estral pretty broken right now? Uh, he's actually permabanned in high low. It's because the tank Estral, the Bruiser Estral version is back. You can go for Divine Sunderer and it actually gives you a ton of HP so you become extremely tanky. On top of that you are also able to build Frozen Heart. Build these items guys then no assassin will ever be able to kill you because you have a ton of HP, you have a ton of armor and then you have a ton of AD as well. So an AD carry with the stats of a bruiser pretty much. And for someone who's already really safe, like Israel, because of his E, that makes him so deadly to play against. So when you play him in lane, guys, you try to um, get a lot of hits with that Q. And remember that it does proc your Sheen, but first you want to get that T item. Because you want to get that stacked as soon as possible, you don't really want to start with it unless you're playing in a really safe lane. You know, you play against some of these long range mages who just stay back and AFK farm like a Lux. Like a 6 or something, you know those matchups where you don't really kill each other, that's where uh, tier start is fine. But if you play against assassins or something like a Jace who has really high kill pressure, then you go for the Torrents. 
uh, plate. So you try to poke people as much as possible and also one important thing is that if you mark somebody with your W and you just E in a random direction, your E will prioritize the target who's marked by your W. So you can use that to hit people who's hiding behind the minion wave. Because your Q can be body blocked by the minions, but the W can't. So you mark someone with a W and then you can just E forward and it will prioritize the enemy champion. That's a very good way to get some poke off. Estral is incredibly strong before your first base, uh, because when you get here then of course you're losing some damage because you're going for the scaling route, you make sure that you have enough mana as an AD caster, that is absolutely crucial. At this point you have to just stay back, you know, use your Q to farm with, especially if you're in a bad matchup, you just stay all the way back, last it the minions with Q and then just recall once you're low mana. Your ultimate is the global ability that Estral is known for. You can hit anyone on the map, try to snipe people with it. We can just go ahead and recall here. So we have a lot of goals, of course, we want to get the AD items, but you want the Sheen first. As I mentioned earlier on, your Q procs on hit. So it's gonna activate the Sheen almost every single time you use your Q. That's a lot of free damage you're getting from this item. It's a lot easier to farm as well because since your Q deals so much damage, then you can last hit the minions even though they are a relatively high HP. And remember that even though you are playing a caster champion, you still have to make sure that you get those auto attacks off, especially because of that passive, which ends up giving you a lot of attack speed. That's a really nice snipe with the ultimate, but that's pretty much how you want to use it. You see someone low HP across the map, guys, you try to get that snipe off. Of course, try to make sure that you are out of vision when you use it, otherwise people will know in advance and then they will move. Does deal reduced damage to minions and monsters though, because um, previously it dealt the full damage, so people just used it on the minion wave to get a free recall off. Now you can't really do that anymore because it deals a lot less damage to them. But it does have crazy AP scaling and AD scaling, so if you play AP Astro, then this ultimate is going to hit like a nuke. So honestly, we're just looking to scale up, but of course, if you can win the matchup, you do that by landing a lot of these Qs, then you can also go for the kill. I have Exhaust here because it is Assassin meta. The champions we are playing against most games are Assassins and all the champions with a lot of burst damage, so Exhaust really helps you survive. And win those 1 versus 1s as well. Um, the only thing um, Israel misses or is missing is wave clear. Because his Q is single target damage, then it's going to take a while pushing out waves, but he has pretty much everything else.
That's a really nice counter gang by Blitzcrank. It's always good if you have the support who roam a lot because uh, support is one of the strongest roles right now in Soul Queue because they're able to roam so often and really impact the map. They're not as reliant on gold as the ADC mid laner top or jungler is, so they're able to roam more often. That's pretty much how you want to carry the game as a support. You're an ADC guy, so remember to stay behind the front line, poke people with your Qs, and if they are within range, then also get your auto attacks off, but otherwise just stay back, hit those Qs. If you manage to do that consistently, then you're going to win a lot of fights. Because Israel with the Sheen, there are very few champions who can match that damage. It's a very safe pick in the mid lane because he has his uh, E. So whenever he's a strong pick in solo queue, then he's gonna be absolutely broken for mid lane. Because he actually has a decent amount of kill pressure and he's impossible to gank if you play it uh, properly. It's also impossible to kill with this build he has at the moment with the Divine Sunder in and the Frozen Heart. Also get a ton of damage because of the Sunder giving you Armor and magic pen and also deals bonus damage and then you also get the mana meal. Now we got the main mythic item, the mythic item that's making Israel really broken right now. You also get a lot of sustain from it so... You don't really need lifesteal items guys because this one pretty much gives you everything you need. And the runes as well. But yeah, now your Qs will hit like a truck, so just try to spam people. You're also going to heal up for a lot when you do that. Just gonna focus on pushing. Wow, they somehow died topside, actually that's weird, because they looked like they were going to win, but... That's a disaster. That Sheen combined with that mythic item is really going to hit for a lot of damage. And you also get a lot of sustain on top of that. So whenever that axe is ready guys, try to abuse that low cooldown on your Qs. As you can see, if we manage to hit a few of these Qs, then the opponent will be sent out of lane. Also remember to weave in your auto attacks when possible, for example if you use that WE combo then also make sure that you get that one auto attack off. Got the first tower. So let me get the solo uh, gold though, that would have been a lot better for us. And they're doing the drake so I'm just gonna push mid right now, so the mid game pretty much started. You're not a split pusher, so you don't go to the sideline, you know, stay in the sideline. You can go and pick up waves though, but you want to stay with your team. Stay in the backline in fights, unless you have a numbers advantage or you are super fit. Nice. And be careful using your E. The only time you want to use your E in the lane is you are 100% certain that you can win the fight and you don't get ganked because if your E is down and you get ganked then you're pretty much dead because you are still an AD carry so you're really squishy until you have your mythic item. So be careful with how you use that E guys. Wow that uh, mist thing is really annoying because you can't target her so that sucks a bit. Mid tower's down, so that's why I'm staying the silent. Or oh, are we getting caustics? Yeah, a bit too low extended Blitzcrank, he should just have walked down with us. But the mid tower's down, so we want to try to get all the outer towers. Top end tower's also down, so we want to get the bottom one. 
But the Herald is also up, so most of the time you want to be staying mid lane even after the first tower is down. But you're on Eddie carry, so that's the safest for you. You can also try to use your ultimate to steal away objectives, but that's going to have the most amount of impact if you're playing APS shield because that's why your ultimate deals the most uh, possible damage. But sometimes it still works out though. If the enemy jungler doesn't have uh, his smite up, then sometimes you will be able to steal those barons and dragons. I'm just staying here to zone away people. That WQ actually hurts for a lot, considering Leona actually has a lot of resistances. And it is an anti-tank item that Divine Thunderer, so it's especially good into bruisers and tanks. I'm always open to new ideas. Even the Senna is building Divine Thunderer because that's how OP that item is right now, so you definitely want to use this item on ranged champions before it gets nerfed next patch. You can go for another hit with the tower. You can even get the tower down here. But um, there are two people top side and two bottom side, so this is free. We do not want to take the inhibitor though. I pinged him back and if you watch my videos then you know that taking the inhibitor this early on in the game is really really bad. Um, you try to take it at the 20 minute mark or after. Because if you take it too early then you will not be able to end the game and that mid lane wave will keep pushing towards them. So you'll be losing all these minions while they will be getting free farm. So they can pretty much use that to come back into the game with. But if you take it after the 20 minute mark guys, that's when the Baron spawns, so you have something uh, to take while that inhibitor is down. But So just be careful of not taking it too early, because you can actually end up helping the enemy team. The way clear sucks though on this champion, so that's the only uh, bad part of him if you play him in the mid lane because mid laners need really good wave clear. Because good wave clear means that you'll be able to push the waves fast and you can get prior, so you can help out your jungler first. Or you can also be the first one to roam. Oh wow, this is an ultimate. I got kind of surprised by the Karstik's damage right there because I was not isolated. I stood right next to the wolves, but he almost one-shot me still. And that is the Proros Claw, he gets so much lethality from it, so... He's also shredding this Kaiser. We do have the upgraded mana immune though, so this is a big, big power spike, guys, and this is why we want to start carrying the game. We have the Divine Sundra, we also have the Mura mana, so our damage is absolutely ridiculous at this point, so we need to start forcing fights. Force fights, get objectives, and then try to look to end the game from there. Just want to go mid, it is still early on for the inhibitor, but at this point it's fine, because if we do end up taking the inhibitor, then the Baron is spawning, so we can use that extra time to take down the Baron.
thing is you don't want to be split pushing as the AD carry but if your bot lane goes mid then you can also just be in the side lane just make sure that when you pick up a wave guys then you quickly rotate back to your team again because otherwise you will not make it in time if a fight or something starts because you don't have teleport you want exhaust on Israel mid so you can survive those one versus ones and even win them This crank is like following me everywhere, I'm not sure why, I think it's because Kaisa is pretty much useless so he's trying to peel for me, that's also fine though. When that Divine Sondra passive is ready, just spam your Q guys, it has such a low cooldown as well. That really adds up if you're able to poke enemy champions a lot during fights or even before the fight starts. At this point we're just looking to catch somebody and then we can turn that into a Baron. I don't know, Kha'Zix has some really insane uh, isolation damage. I knew that he was there, but... Yeah, I kind of ran it down, because I knew it. That's why I used that Q right there, and we saw that it hit as well, but... I didn't expect him to turn on us when Blitzcrank was also there, so... So at this point, um, your items you can get frozen hard if you need more armor. It pretty much lets you survive those one versus ones against assassins. And since you're playing against a full AD team, then it's the perfect choice right now. But if you don't need that extra defensive stats, then you can also go for the armor pin item. And you want to go for the Cirilla Scrudge because that gives you a ton of armor pin and it also lets you slow on abilities. So that's like having the old Frozen Mallet, except this only slows on abilities and it's still really good though because... You get to kite people so it's almost like you have that old Icebound Gauntlet passive with you. I'm gonna go for the Baron here, so I'm just gonna try to zone them off. That was some ridiculous damage. Um, onto the center. But yeah, if you catch a squishy or something, guys, then you're just gonna one shot them. Have the Divine Sundra, you also have your other item transformed, so it gives you a ton of damage. You hit somebody as squishy with that full combo, then they're going to lose. After you have the Divine Sondra and the Muramana guys, then you can build a lot of different items. Because you always want Cerulea Scratch into a build, but you can also go for Serpent's Fang if they have a lot of skills in that team. I can also go for that anti healing item. If they have a lot of healing. Serpent's Fang is especially good if you play against uh, Israel, Yone, Lulu and other champions with a lot of shielding. For example, Yone and Yasuo have that shield bow. So Serpent's Fang is going to deny them that extra uh, safety right there. And it also completely counters Lulu. So if you play against champions like these then you can go for Serpent's Fang, but you don't want to get it earlier than as your fourth item, including boots. In. 
So that means you get uh, Divine Sundra, your Mana Mune, your Boots, and then you can go for Serpent's Fang. Most of the time though, you need Garuda Scrudge, so you'll end up actually getting that Serpent's Fang as your fifth item. Or you can get it as your fourth if you want to. You can just go ahead and use the Barrel Minions in the middle end and finally take down that inhibitor that has been up for far too long. Thing is, walking up like this on an AD carry is always risky, but because this is Estrell, we have so much HP from Divine Sundra, and then we also have some bonus armor. We don't quite have the Frozen Heart yet, but we have Exhaust up, so if somebody comes, then we can 1 versus 1 them. Just trying to protect Blitzcrank from uh, getting nuked. Because he's really low HP, so of course they're going to try to chase him, especially when they have Karsix. There's a big wave coming in the bottom side, so I'm gonna go bot, and there are no objectives up anyway, so... My team should not try to look for fights unless they can win it, because I will not be there, and it will be a waste if I don't pick up that wave. Look at that massive wave coming in. Problem is, a lot of people try to ignore these waves, and that's why... When they play champions with low or poor wave clear, they end up getting really low CS numbers. That's because they don't farm these waves. Your team will get caught, that does happen in solo queue, but that doesn't matter. As long as you make the correct move, then it's going to work out in the vast majority of your games. I'm gonna push in the bottom side here, guys. Actually, that ultimate hit more people than I expected it to, so that's fine. So maybe I get an assist if they get a kill. Just gonna push bottom side because we have nothing to take mid anymore. Baron is also not up, so I'm gonna go bot and then we can try to end from here because my team is fighting and they're winning the fight. I'm gonna just go straight for the end. And that is going to be GG, so that was the actual video, I hope this was helpful, as always see you guys in the next one.